every single regular Excel user should be using Power Query on a regular basis. And it's so simple and easy to use. Power Query is excellent at grouping and analyzing data in tables and outputting it as brand new tables that you can then use for further analysis or charts, etc. So here's a table we have of some orders. It's quite a long table, several thousand rows, but also a lot of columns. Let's bring this into Power Query using data from table stroke range. Here's the data in Power Query. And if we wanted to know order value by region, we could just click on region and hit group by. That will jump us into a group by dialog box that says region and it's defaulted to count the rows, but we could say we want to sum the order value and we'll call that new column that we're going to create the total order value and hit OK. And there we have our instant summary. But what if we wanted to add some more detail to that? Well, the beauty of Power Query is we can either amend the formula, which I wouldn't suggest, or we go over here and we click on the cog icon and we're back in our dialog box. And in here, we could go to the advanced version where we can add extra summation. So it, rather than region just on its own, we could also pick that we want customer segment. So let's just do that. And now you can see we have a total order value by those two things. Again, we'll click back on the cog item. We can also add further aggregations. Let's stick with order value, but this time let's do the average order value. And we can just call it anything we want, but I'll call it average order value, of course, and hit OK. We now have our total and average by region and customer segment. And hopefully you saw on this group by thing here, you could add as many groupings as you want. So we could add in, say, the product category here. We could add completely different aggregates. So we could say that we want the sum of the gross profit, for example, as well. We can change the order of things. So if we want to move up the product category, we can click on the three dots and move it up, for example. So it's the first thing and we can hit OK. And we have a completely different table here than we started with. As with all queries, you can close and load them to a table in a new worksheet or an existing worksheet, and you'll get your summarized data, which is dynamically linked to the original data. Any changes in this will result in changes to your output query. Have you ever been presented with data that looks something like this, where you've got loads and loads of columns of numbers? And there's a lot of rows on here, something like a couple of thousand. And I want to summarize it. Now, traditionally, you might say, well, I'll use a pivot table. And what you're going to find is all of the columns appear in the pivot table and you're left dragging them over one at a time. And if you miss one, you've got to move it in. And then all the number formats, well, we need to change that number format. Let's put it as currency, but it only changes that one and you've got to do the same for every single one. Let's do it with Power Query. Turn your data into a table, hit from data stroke range, it will bring it in. And what we're going to do is turn all of those columns and numbers into two columns, one with the column name and the other one with the number. And the way we're going to do that is highlight all the columns that I've not got the numbers in and we'll go on the transform menu. You'll see we have unpivot columns and we're going to unpivot other columns. And when we do that, you'll see we get an attribute, which was basically what the column name was, and a value. So you can see it's written a formula for us. Regardless of whether you understand that or not, you can see the name attribute here. We could potentially edit that and I'm going to call that year month and we've edited our formula. How do we get that back into Excel? We go to the home menu, close and load, and we can hit close and load two. I'm going to create this as a table in a new worksheet here, just so we can see it going on. There's our new data. Now we've got a button summarized with pivot table. We'll hit OK. And now we have one value column 
and we have a year month column which we can put on as our columns and product category. Not only that, because this is one value column, we can change that to whatever format we want and every single number changes. And we can mess about by having that as rows as well if we like. And if, for example, we want to change anything in our underlying data, so say we're going to times absolutely everything in this data here by two, we can go back to our output from Power Query. We can hit refresh and you can see all of those numbers double. And then when we refresh our pivot table, they will double as well. So everything flows through correctly. Power Query is absolutely excellent at performing lookups across multiple tables, and it gives you far more options than standard lookups would do on the grid, such as XLOOKUP, VLOOKUP, or just straight lookup. So let's get all this data into Power Query. Now, as long as it's in a table, you can click anywhere and just do on the data menu from table stroke range. So let's get all of these tables in. And we're just for now going to close and load two and only create a connection. All of our data now is inside Power Query. And what we want to do is we want to create a new table from this orders table that includes everything linked to it. First, right click on that and click reference. And what that do is create a new query that's linked back to the original orders table. That just means it keeps it cleaner because it means the original tables are still there as per the spreadsheet. So I'm just going to call this um, orders. And what we want to do is we want to bring in the customer name, the product name, and various other attributes that we have in the customer table and the product table, for example. Let's do that. First of all, then we hit on merge queries and it brings up our little table here. And we want to say which one do we want to pick from? So the customer table and we literally just click on the two columns that match like that. And it says what sort of join do we want? Almost always you'll be using a left outer, which is essentially like a standard lookup inside a spreadsheet. And it says you want everything from the first table and what matches from the second table. Ideal. We'll click OK and we get this thing that says table. When we click on the word table, you can see what it's matched. And we hit this little expander here and it says which columns do we want to expand? We've already got customer ID, so all we need is the name and the region, and we don't need a prefix on the column, so we'll untick that. Incidentally, an extra option is that we can use it to count things, or if there was a value column, we'd be able to sum as well. But we'll go for the standard expand and hit OK. You can see now we've got our customer name and region in this orders table. What I'm going to do now is try and find the products that we have no orders for. And this is something that would be very complicated or could get very messy inside the Excel grid because it would involve matching and then looking for errors and things like that. Let's do that. So I'm going to duplicate this query here. I'm going to call it products with no orders. This time we'll merge the queries and we'll pick the products table and we'll say that the two product IDs should match. But instead of a left outer join, I'm going to pick this one, which is a right anti join, which is the rows that are only in the second table. In other words, there's a product that doesn't appear in the order table. And that's what I want. So I'm going to click on that and hit OK. And at first sight, you might think, well, it's not actually done anything yeah because we've just got this one line. But when you click on it, you can see it's an entire table down here of all these products, which you can preview here. And if you click on the expander there, you might want all of those, for example, and you can just hit OK, and it will give you a list of all these products with their name and product category. And whilst they're highlighted, we could highlight themselves. You could remove the other columns by saying remove other columns, and now you have a table of all your products that have no orders on them at all. You could export this by saying close and load to and put this as a table on a new worksheet like this. And now you have products with no orders as a refreshable table list 
So anytime you add new orders and products get included that weren't previously included, the product with no orders will reduce in length as you go. So it's live lookup data. So there you have it. Numerous features of Power Query. This is the tip of the iceberg, this video, but I hope it's given you a really good flavor of what you can do in Power Query and hope you start that journey towards learning it. See you soon.